So I think I've already received like two promotions since I've been hired on. Pause, pause, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> Jordy, how you skip over that with the pre-interview? Wait, how long you been on this job? I've only been there for a year, and a year and a half now, so. A year and a half and you've already mm -hmm. had two promotions? Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> That's not uncommon, Anthony. We get that testimony almost every week. What's happening? No cap. We went AO about to get a play go. Pull up to the table. Let's go. Yo, so <clears throat> a recent study came out and revealed that a lot of, I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off very straightforward. A lot of black people are not in the tech field. It's just, it's the truth. And it bothers me because when I look back, what are the careers that are making wealthy families, wealthy individuals in the top career field? Tech. And nearly 90 to 95% of the tech field are Caucasian people. And I love them. Those are my brothers and sisters in Christ too. But how come we don't have a lot of minorities, a lot of minority ladies, minority brothers, black brothers, black sisters, Asians, you name it in the tech field? Uh, because on average, what I'm seeing, when you get through a program and you get into the tech field, man, you have people making $66,000 up to $100,000 a year. And I even recently met a guy, um, I was out in Las Vegas and he's in the tech field. He does a quarter million dollars a year for his salary. And I'm like, what? And he's 25. And I'm like, where was I? <laughs> what was I doing at 25 years old? I sure, I was for sure not making a quarter million dollars. I wasn't even making $100,000 a year. Heck, I wasn't even making 60. Y'all, my first job was paying me $26,000 a year. I was like, oh my gosh. But today I'm excited because we have my friends who I've partnered with, you all know this, um, from Bethel Tech. They're gonna be joining me today and I have an amazing story. We're gonna share an amazing story of how a single mother a single mother is getting the bag. In the tech field, she's getting the bag. But before we get to this amazing story in today's show, you guys, I wanna remind you two quick things. Number one, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for rocking with us. Man, we have grown tremendously. Last month alone, we grew by 17,000 subscribers within a matter of 13 days. And this month, we are already growing lightning fast. And so, listen, if you're just coming by and you're dating me here and there, yo, just marry your boy. I'm a good looking, I got some good content. Just hit the subscribe button and marry me because I wanna help you uh, grow. We're not just talking about goals this year, we're talking about growth measurements. How do you grow spiritually? How do you grow financially? How do you grow mentally? And we're talking about that here at the table. So hit subscribe if you're watching me on YouTube. Hit subscribe um, if you're watching me and listening to me on the podcast. And then also, listen, you guys know me, when it comes to closing that wealth gap, one of the greatest ways to close the wealth gap is uh, to have ownership. This is ownership if you own your own business, but really I wanna talk about real quickly, owning, owning your own home. You know, my friends over at Churchill Mortgage have recently partnered with me and they have financed all of my homes. And I mean, the experience has been absolutely amazing. You guys have said, hey, Anthony, I can't get a house because I don't have any credit. That's a lie. My friends over at Churchill Mortgage are financing people um, who have no credit, who have no open trade lines, who are first time home buyers. They're doing it all. All you gotta do is go to anthonyoneal.com slash Churchill and they're gonna give you a lightning fast, a certified pre-approval. This means that their manual underwriter already reviewed your document and said, yo, you're 95% there. Go find the house and let's walk through this process with you. They're gonna assist you with the, the first time uh, home buyers assistant program if you need some money go with your down payment and then here's what I really love they're going to guarantee your sellers a $5,000 check if you have to back out at the last minute because of financing so this gives you a competitive edge so go to anthonyoneal.com slash churchill let my friends over there get you into the first home uh, but when we talk about wealth when we talk about wealth ownership is key but then also your career path is key your, your career path is very, very important. Um, and y'all know me, I wrote the book called Debt Free Degree. Y'all know uh, I am a huge advocate of not borrowing any money when it comes to going to school. And then also when you go to school, one of the greatest ways to um, avoid 
debt is to pick the correct career path for yourself. And oftentimes we see this generation being pushed towards a four-year university. And while I agree, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be a school teacher, you need to go the, the traditional way in state. OK, but let's say you want to be a carpenter. Let's say you want to be a welder. You don't have to go to a four year university. You can go to a trade school. Um, let's say you want to get into the tech field. You can go to a boot camp, save you some money and then also come out making a bag. <laughs> I love that style. I, man, if I could go back to the very beginning when I was 20 something years old, I really wish I would have met this amazing organization called Bethel Tech. Um, and, and I'm just impressed with what they are doing and how they are doing it. So can y'all welcome back to the table for his second appearance, uh, my friend Ryan. And for the first time, uh, to the table is my friend Jordan, who I just met. What's going on, you two? How you doing? Anthony. Ah, Jordan. Hi, Anthony. I like, I like that, Ryan. You was like, let me let, uh, Jordan say hi first. <laughs> Yo, so let, let's get into it, Ryan. Uh, let, let's let's give um, our tribe, because you're part of the tribe now, you're part of the family. Let's give uh, um, our tribe just a little history of Bethel Tech. Um, then I would even love to even talk about what we've been able to accomplish as a, a partnership. I mean, because we have close to, what, 100 students who have joined you all's program and starting the journey and really about to make some major moves. So one, let's just talk about, cause some people, Ryan, watching this are new from the last time they, they um, from the last time you've joined, they didn't see that show. So let's bring them up to date. What is tech? What is a tech field? What, how is Bethel Tech getting people prepared to go into that field? And then just a couple of highlights about our partnership and what people are doing when they're coming over to Bethel. Yeah, man. So, you know, tech, we talk about this often. Tech is any type of innovation or advancement that moves humanity forward. And uh, specifically what we're in is in the technology space, computing, software development, data science, cybersecurity. And the future of work is in tech. Every company, to some degree, considers itself a tech company, whether it's a Facebook or a Google or an Apple or if it's like Chipotle or Bank of America or Cigna Healthcare. And so um, the, all these companies are falling over themselves to find qualified tech talent. And so we really met that need. Uh, and we equip individuals with the most in-demand tech skills so that they can go into the tech field in as little as nine months going through our program, three to four months later, um, get a job in the tech space where before going through our program, they have little to no tech background. Uh, they get proficient in these areas that I just mentioned, and they go from you know ma making maybe twenty five thousand dollars a year to starting out sixty five k. It's not uncommon in, in in two to three years where they're making six figures. So it's incredible. You know, we launched with you guys. Uh, man, our first classes uh, that we started um, started Anthony O'Neill. Uh, students was back in January and you know we like you said we have almost 100 students it's been incredible I mean like they're now halfway through their program uh, or over halfway and the testimonies that are coming in just as they're going through it they're like I didn't realize that I could I could think this way like I could do this like I've never been more seen and known than in this program thank you for helping me discover who I am and where I can go and it's just a beautiful thing. I can't wait to share more testimonies as they graduate and uh, as they're getting jobs in the field. Man, it's, it's so cool. I got a DM and I sent you a text um, about it. I think it was last month or sometimes uh, recently. And it was just so cool just to see my tribe like, yo, bro, I went to class and like 90 percent of the class was a O tribe. And, and it was just it, it made me feel good uh, because. I want to see my tribe winning. I want to see my tribe shifting and going after everything that they want and really to make more money. And uh, one of the guys I was talking to, I was like, man, so what do you think your potential is? He was like, well, if I do it right, work it right, get through this program. He says, I want to be the top of my class. He said, I mean, I could come out making six figures. I was like, really? I said, what are you making right now? He says, I'm making $42,000 a year. That's a game changer. Yeah. Um, for 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 that. Before we get to Jordan, um, a lot of people are saying, "Well, cool. What what? I hear you, Ryan. Uh, you all get us prepared, but what are some example jobs of of what we can get?" And 
I did some research, you did some research. So in 2022, of uh, the best jobs, um, the top five, one of number one was information security analyst. Number two was a nurse practitioner. Number three was a physician assistant. Number four was mental and health service uh, services manager. Number five was a software develop, uh, developer. So the top five jobs right now in the year 2022, two of those Bethel can help you get into, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and even it's interesting to see over the last couple of years, it used to be software developer was number one, but then uh, the healthcare field has really expanded. And then of course we're seeing all these, um, you know, these cybersecurity issues within the government, within, you know, you had the coastal pipeline last year that yeah. caused a, a fuel shortage on the East coast. You had, you know, hacks into like, uh, you know, credit card and financial institutions. And so companies are needing people who can protect them from hackers so their data is not stolen and uh, things aren't shut down. So that's become very quickly the number one um, sought after job. And uh, we're seeing about a 30 to 40 percent increase over the next 10 years with that uh, with, with, with that job. And, and our cybersecurity program speaks specifically to becoming an information security analyst. And then tried and true, software development is never going to go away. It's number five right now. I bet next year it'll probably be back at number two or three. And so you can't go wrong and uh, learn full stack software development, which is what Jordan um, went through with, with JavaScript. So uh, you go through that, like the sky's the limit. That's not going away. That's going to continue to increase over the next few years. Wait, 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 wait. You just shifted my whole mindset. Hey, Jordan. You you went through the software development program at Bethel Tech? Yes, I did the full stack program and my language was JavaScript. For real? Mm -hmm. So so for those watching right now, can you in like one minute just really just break down exactly what for like someone who's never heard of that? If you had explained that to let's say you have a daughter, right? If I'm not mistaken? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If you had explained if you had explained software development to your daughter. How would you explain it? Like, what is what is that program? So software development program specifically at Bethel Tech is a lot of the fundamentals on um, software. So pretty much the, the back end or the front end of a website or a system is pretty much what Bethel Tech enables us to kind of learn and figure out is pretty much how it works. So <sighs> there's a, a platform for every website that um, you log on to or, you know, type up. Pretty much we're learning um, how to not only manage that system, but also troubleshoot that system, figure out what bugs are happening or what issues are happening. So pretty much that's what software development is. So, for example, Ryan and Jordan, what you're saying, like my website, anthonyoneal.com. If you want to see a good looking man with a lot of good financial information, go over to anthonyoneal.com. But on the back end, I, I am using WordPress. So is 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 that what we're teaching people how to operate and maneuver things in WordPress. Is, is that is am I understanding that correct? I mean, that's just one um, system that you can use to host a website and to manage a website. But um, with JavaScript, there's tons of um, I use like React and other programs so that are similar to WordPress, but a little bit more of like the technical system side of it. So WordPress, I think, is very easy and optimized for users who don't know any type of coding to jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> but a JavaScript would be the hardcore coding side of a system like that to actually set up WordPress to run a website. So I hope that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. That's why you're the pro and I just do the show. <laughs> because, I mean, I I'm thinking what you said back in, that's WordPress. But I understand what you're saying because I remember my uh, graphic artist saying, yo, I got to go in there and do some Java. I got to do, do some coding to kind of move this thing around. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. coding? And so he sent me a picture like, you see this code? This means this, this means that. I said, bro, I don't understand nothing you just said. Uh, that's why I pay you all the money. So I see why now tech is so expensive. Uh, not expensive, but, well, it is expensive. Y'all are expensive people, uh, you know, to hire. And I see why y'all make all the good money. Um, so let's let's start with your story, um, Jordan. Why, why tech? Like when you are, how old are you again? I'm 28. 28. Mm-hmm. How much money are you making right now? Ballpark. Don't uh, don't give us the exact number. Just ballpark. What, what's your ballpark? Around like 70 a year. Mm -hmm. You're 28 <laughs> years old making near. I want to ask this question. How many of y'all are 28 years old making $70,000? I don't 
I was 28 making about, yeah, I was 28, nah. I was 28 making a little bit more. 28, I was making about 32. Yeah, because I was a, I was a youth pastor. Lord Jesus. Ryan, they, they weren't paying us money back then. They still not paying youth pastors Grace a lot. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, I loved, I loved my young people, but boy, that check was hard. I'd be like, what am I doing? But Jordan, you're 28 making $70,000 and mm -hmm. you just graduated the program, what, two years ago, I think? Yeah, about two years ago now. Mm -hmm. Real quick, what were you making before you got into the program? I believe like around 15 to 20K a year <laughs> was what I was making. You were 25 years old making about 15 to $20,000 a year? Mm -hmm. Yep, I was only doing house cleaning that helped like pay the ba bare minimum of our lifestyle, me and my daughter. So it wasn't, I, I wasn't running a house. I didn't really have like a high, um, yeah, I guess like expense, but it was just the bare minimum that I was making. Wow. How old is your daughter now? She's seven. She's seven. So you was making, so were you living with family at the time or were you sacrificing no, and just I, figuring things out? Yeah, I was sacrificing a lot. I, and honestly, I was trying to figure out what I was doing. I found myself in a position of being a single parent overnight, mm -hmm. um, having to think on my feet. I felt um, called to actually go to the School of Ministry in Redding, California. And okay. from there, it was um, me renting a room out from different students and different people sharing a house. So me and my daughter pretty much shared a room <laughs> the past wow. four years. <laughs> so. Wow. And I love your heart because it said that you you went into school of ministry. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that. So let, let's let's talk about this. What made you get in, look into the tech field? I'm curious. Well, Bethel Tech actually launched when I was in first year, which is pretty cool. So I got to see a lot of, you know, Ryan uh, coming in and sharing what tech is and explaining it to us and kind of feeling the momentum behind the program. But I didn't really understand how it could work for me or if I can do that. I have always been a little tech savvy, but not enough to code something. I just always felt that was way over my head. And then it was about the summer of my second year when I was getting ready to move to Austin for to finish my third year of school where I just had this, I guess, God moment of how do I want to fund what I feel the Lord is calling me to do? Do I want to work at like Walmart <laughs> to get the bills paid? Or do I want to actually make a lucrative income to fund those ideas and those things that the Lord was like putting into my life? So I ended up calling and reaching out to Bethel Tech. And I think I seen this um, like this interview that Ryan did on CBN, I believe it was that summer. And it just so broke, it just became real to me. So before, while I was in, you know, first and second year of, you know, the school of ministry was just this lofty, like, oh, okay, that's cool, but I'm already in school. I'm already applying myself here in ministry. I don't think I could even have time for that or um, desire for that. It just didn't really compute for me. So then it was right when I was launching and I watched that interview and it just became real of like, oh my gosh, this is possible. This is not only something that I can, you know, step into, but something that can launch me into the next, you know, season of my life. So I had an amazing call. I reached out to the administration team or the admin team. And um, it was so cool to kind of hear like what's possible. They were so filled with hope. And so I, I thought they were going to turn me down because I didn't have whatever requirements I thought in my head <laughs> that I needed to do the program. But it was like, oh my gosh, you're actually the perfect candidate. Let's get you in here. So that's kind of how my journey started with Bethel Tech. Wow. I'm sitting here just amazed to hear where you started, to hear how you got connected to uh, to tech and then into Bethel Tech. Because I think a lot of people are like you, like, man, this sounds very, what's the proper word, like nerdy or very stressful. Mm -hmm. I look at all these codes, look at all these numbers, look at all these words. Uh, but you say, you know what, hey, I want better. I want more for me, for my daughter, and I could do it. Um, I'm curious, Jordan, uh, before we get into more of your story, someone watching right now saying, yo, I, I'm interested in the tech field, but I'm a little nervous because of all these coding. What would you tell your friend who's saying, yo, I'm a little nervous, girl, like, like girl, like you're making good money, but, but I, can, I don't know if I can do what you're doing. I, girl, I can barely, I can barely read right now. I get tired from reading. <laughs> what would you tell your girlfriend who's watching right now? How would you encourage her and say, you know what, do it, try it, you know? Um, do you feel your confidence got stronger when you got connected with Bethel mm -hmm. Tech? And when I say Bethel Tech, while I've partnered with Bethel Tech, I'm saying this, when you got the education. Bethel Tech mm -hmm. is the best place to get the education, but 
think about it just from the education point. When you got into the school, mm-hmm. into the program, did that did, did it build your confidence anymore? A hundred percent. I think the community and how Bethel Tech like walks beside you. So I I didn't feel like I was alone trying to learn all of the new material. I really felt supported by my instructors, by my tutors. Mm. It really made time for me to kind of help me grasp what, what I was being taught. But I, I really felt so like, I felt really proud of myself of like, oh my gosh, something that I thought I could never do. Now I'm actually stepping into it and running with it. So I would just say it for anyone who's even slightly interested to go for it. Um, because it's so much more accessible than we even realize. And so I think actually going through the program, going through all the classes, it just became, I felt this, oh, wow, I'm actually a part of the tech community and this is amazing. So it was great. That's awesome. Ron, I'm curious, man, you, you, you run the whole program over there and you've been in from, from the very beginning and I can't reveal other stuff that you all have coming, but you all are, are really about to take over this whole Christian educational space. I'm pretty sure oftentimes you're meeting people young people, older people, because y'all watch, this program is not just for 20 something, 30 somethings. They have 60 something, 70 somethings in this program who wanna shift and make more money. But Ryan, like me, I'm gonna be honest with you. Me, I will be scared of the tech field because of all these coding and stuff. As the president of this program, what would you say to someone watching right now saying, yo, I really wanna try it, but I don't know if I could do it because I'm not, I don't think I can, do all the coding and do all that type of stuff. What would you say uh, to those individuals? Yeah, I would say, first of all, the world needs you. It needs your brilliance and your creativity. Like tech influences every part of our society. It touches every part of our lives. What we're doing right now is because of technology. And it would be a shame if we didn't get the full you to bring to the world. And so our entire program is designed for people who have little to no tech background in as little as nine months, we take you from scratch, learning the fundamentals of web development and coding structures to getting you, by the end, you have this really incredible project that you worked on together with a team that you can put in front of employers. If you'll just stick with it, if you'll just do it for nine months, you know, three to six months later, you could go from making minimum wage to making $70,000 like Jordan. And let me, let me just say something, Anthony, real quick about Jordan. Our team fell in love with her from the get-go because she's brilliant, of course. Uh, She's wonderful, she's resourceful, she's determined, she's curious, and she's resilient. And she has a heart for the Lord. Mm. And she listens to what he says to her and she goes and does it. So even if this might have fell out of her lane, so to speak, because she didn't have a tech background, if God is telling you to do something, you can have the confidence that he is going to fulfill anything that he tells you to do and what he has on your life. So she said, yes, she had a surrendered heart and she went after it, man. And our team just loves <laughs> Jordan. So when you and I you know, first started talking about, hey, let's, let's get some people on the show, like Jordan immediately popped in my head. And, um, you know, and it's just, it's just, we care so deeply about our students. We're not going to just throw a bunch of information at you. We're going to walk you through this so you know you can have confidence going into the marketplace that you are going to be a massive asset to whoever employs you. Yeah, when I first met Jordan, too, when we logged on, um, because we use Riverside, so before the show, y'all, you know, we get on Riverside, do some sound check, and I was like, Jordan is a true. Her spirit is so great. You could tell Mm -hmm. that she loves people, loves her job, and just have, you have such a calm spirit, you know, calm. To be 28, uh, you look young, but you carry yourself very, very, very mature. And I was like, yeah, she's about 35, 36, the way she's carrying herself. I was like, but she looked like she's like 25. But I'm like, when you talk, when you articulate, like, man, you, you, I, I see, you are definitely um, um, uh, Bethel Tech worthy. You know, and, oh, and, and just kingdom, kingdom worthy. And that's just, that, that is just amazing. Um, so, Jordan, you, you finished the program two years ago. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you doing through the program? Because you're a single mom and mm-hmm. you have a lot of single moms watching us right now saying, OK, wait, can I do this while I work another job? And while being a single mother, like, is it stressful? Is it hard? Is it easy? What are your thoughts on, on that? 
I mean, it was definitely stressful going through it just because um, at the time I didn't plan it this way, but it just so happened that I started um, my first nine months of Bethel Tech as I was finishing my third year of ministry school. Wow. So that meant that me and my daughter actually picked up and moved to Austin, Texas, and I have never visited there before. I pretty much like found an apartment with a roommate online and I actually met Ryan the first day of my um, third year experience, which was really cool. He found out that I was a Bethel Tech student and they ended up blessing me. I needed a small amount of money, um, which felt like a huge amount of money at the time <laughs> to get started at the program. And Ryan and the team totally blessed me with that tuition money so I can get started. Um, so I ended up working at Starbucks opening shifts. This is so crazy to think about. And then um, my daughter would be watched by my roommate. So I would say like community is so huge. So if it wasn't for the Lord actually calling me to Austin and facilitating community and everything I needed, like this job that totally worked with my hours, I was able to open at Starbucks. I'd be done around 1030, right? As the time, of, you know, my daughter was waking up in the morning and then I had the entire evening and night to just focus on Bethel Tech. So I think everything I needed, he facilitated. So yes, it was stressful, but I think the huge pay up, payoff, you know, part of it was um, being to live this, you know, amazing life, have this amazing career that now is facilitating so many things for my daughter and for myself that I could have never thought of. So I think, yes, it was stressful. And I think that's the reality of just juggling a lot of things as a single mom. But I think knowing the grace that you have to move forward. There was many times where I felt like, oh man, like maybe I can't do this or maybe I'm, you know, so tired. I'm not one of those people that runs off of like two hours of sleep. <laughs> but I think just being able to be flexible of like, man, this is only temporary. This is only nine months. And um, what was cool is that the Buffalo Tech program actually lasted about the same time as my third year. So they both kind of finished at the same time, which is really great. But it was through my um, third year that I met so many software developers because uh, there's actually a church that Bethel started in Austin called Bethel Austin. And a lot of the people that I met there were software developers. A lot of the people that I um, did my internship with had a lifelong career of, you know, coming out of technology. That was actually real examples for me to grasp on that I didn't actually have before moving to Austin. So um, long story short, I think a lot of the things that I needed for that season just were available to me because of the yes of the Lord over that part of my life. You know, <clears throat> Jordan, thank you for saying that because you, you reminded me of some things, of some testimonies that I've received from, you know, our tribe about Bethel. Um, so it's funny how you said Bethel gave you some money so that way you could get into the program, right? Um, uh, for those of you all watching right now, Bethel Tech is giving all of my tribe $1,500 off uh, the cost of tuition because they want to be a blessing. Um, that's what we talked about up front, right? But since we've partnered, Bethel has gone extremely over and beyond. If, if, if it's a God thing, mm -hmm. if, 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 if it's a God thing, you can't put limits on God. They've blessed several, not just one, not just two, with full scholarships. I'm talking about single moms who who are on hardships. Um, and, 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 and I'll, I'll be honest with y'all up front. Bethel Tech is not a good fit for everybody. But if you're not a good fit, they find a place for you to go to even still get the education. And they use their influence to get you into that program. Why? Because if it's a God thing. If you're supposed to be at Bethel, you're going to be at Bethel. If it's not Bethel Tech, and if it's this tech program or that program, they're going to make the phone call for you. They're going to use their influence to get into that because it's not about them. This is about how do we help and how do we serve people? And so, listen, you guys, I, I, I do partner with them. Um, and I partner with them, um, be straightforward, not because of the money, but because I really do believe in this program, before I even partner with them, I was looking for organizations to partner with uh, because I'm like, man, I have to get more minorities into the tech field. Was my math correct, um, Ryan? Is is it three percent of them are African American uh, in the tech space? Yeah, overall. Yeah, uh, I think it's like seven percent. Okay, so yeah. so seven percent of us are in the tech space. Um, and listen, I'm gonna be real. I say it with with Ryan here, man, black people, we smart. We can do the job. 
We just need the education. And we need the education in an affordable way. And Bethel Tech is affordable and they're quick. And you see here, look at this beautiful single mother. She making 70 grand at 60. No, no you ain't, she ain't 60. At 28 years old. You know, she was about to get mad with me. I am not 60. <laughs> And so I, I, I really want you all to, to hear me clearly. The top two fields in America, I mean, the top two jobs in America right now, two of them are tech. Right now is information security analyst. And number five is software developer. I do believe, like with what Ryan said, that software development will be back up top in the top two or three by the end of this year going into 2023. And some of you all are, are watching this show right now saying, okay, I feel, I feel inspired. I want, to, I want to know some more information. I want you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel. Fill out their quick questionnaire. You're going to get a phone call from someone on their team, and they are going to just ask you some questions, dive in deeper with you, and really just, and I like this, they have no problem saying this may not be a good fit. They're not just going to take your money because you want to give them your money. No, they may say, you know what? Hey, you got the money, but this, I don't think this would be a good fit. The tech career field may not be for you, or this program may not be for you. Here are our suggestions. And I've received several. I have one young lady reached out to me and she was like, hey, Bethel Tech wasn't a good look, but they connected me with another program. And that program is a great fit and she's loving it over there. But as y'all see, the majority of the people <laughs> are with Bethel Tech and they're loving the program. So um, I, I love that. And one thing you said too, Jordan, which I really want people to understand. Yeah, I'm glad that you said it, it, it was stressful. I was hoping that you would be honest and I said, oh no, it was easy. Uh, because if it was easy, I don't know if that would be a good, a, a good thing. Because anything that is worth having, anything that is, that is gonna be life changing should require a little bit of stress, a little bit of uncomfortness for a season. You know, if you want to be a diamond, they just can't put you in cold water. They got to put you in the heat. And I believe anything that 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 God really wants to get us better at and stronger at and shift things around in our life, we got to be up underneath some pressure. You know, I want to continue looking good. So I got to put some heavy weights on the bar and I got to be under pressure for a season, one to be healthy and one to look good. And so it sounds like you you went through that season for mm -hmm. 9 months. A single mom taking care of your roommate, to watch your daughter, going to two different schools at the same time, working so you can have the income. Um, and, and, and I just love, 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 love that. Did you ever feel like giving up? Honestly, Jordan, like, did you ever feel like just saying, you know what? I, I don't want to do this no more. Um, there was multiple days <laughs> in the month where I felt like that. Because as you go through the program, the courses do get a little bit more challenging. But I felt... Like it was almost this motivation from the Holy Spirit, to be honest, mm. keep going, keep going forward. Um, and I also felt like he was creating a space for me. And then, like I said, like community was so such a huge part of my story to where I had friends and even my mentor at the time for um, the ministry school. He actually was in tech for like 20 years. So he was actually encouraging me and giving me um, all the help I needed. Uh, so I think having that community, if I didn't have that strong community, I would have probably quit like early on, <laughs> but the Lord knew like the type of people I needed. And also to like to go to his house and to see what lifestyle he had because of technology, I think was a huge motivator for me. So you went to the man's house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Without saying too much information, what, what, was it a big house? Was it a nice house? It, it was amazing. It was like. It was a lot. It was great. <laughs> it was like a man. It was awesome. You, you know what's so funny is before we got on the, the show, Jordan, I asked you a simple question. Said, so you make seventy thousand dollars a year now. Where do you see yourself in the next year? You was like, oh, I'm gonna double it before the end of this year. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa! Twenty nine <laughs> years old making you know a hundred and and, and forty fifty thousand dollars. What? Mm -hmm. What? Say what? What? Mm -hmm. What is motivating you to to do that? Because let me ask you this question. Are you going to stay in the tech field? Is that how you're going to double it? Yeah, definitely. So at the job now that I have, there's multiple um, opportunities for growth and for promotion. So I think I've already received like two promotions since I've been hired on. Pause. In the past year. 
Pause. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Jordy, how you skip over that with the pre-interview? Wait. How long you been on this job? I've only been there for a year, a year and a half now. So, A year and a half, and you've already mm -hmm. had two promotions? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> That's not uncommon, Anthony. We get that testimony almost every week from our students. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You just put in the time, like you said, man, on the other side of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. More than you could possibly think or imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm quiet right now. But I, I was going back to, I remember like when I was in my twenties that I get a pr job promotion. I was, I was working hard, but mm -hmm. I didn't get a job promotion within a year and a half. It took me three years before they gave me a job promotion. And my job promotion was like, psh, what, an extra dollar an hour? You know, it wasn't a lot. Yeah. And so you're thinking, Jordan, that by your your growth um, plan is by this time next year, before you file taxes next year, mm -hmm. you, you'll be making minimum 140, 130. That's, that's your goal in yeah, the tech cool. field. Mm -hmm. what, and you believe that that's possible in the tech field? Oh, 100 percent. I feel like even um, on the side, like there's always opportunities for me to make more money for me outside of my actual full time job, um, <laughs> which is cool, like freelance work and picking up odd jobs here and there. So it's totally possible. That's a good that's a good question right there um, between you or you or Ryan. What are some good side jobs you can pick up in your field? And this this is why I'm asking this question, because most people will get a degree, right? won't even work in their degree field because there's really not a lot of jobs in that field. But in this situation, you went to school for nine months. You mm -hmm. got a job in your degree field and you can pick up a side hustle in the mm -hmm. same field when the majority of the people in the world can't even get a job that they mm -hmm. have a degree in. So, so, so this is so good. I'm sorry if I'm scaring you, Jordan. I'm so sorry. Ryan should have told you how, 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 how excited I get. Um, um, cause I'm excited because I mean, someone, someone right now is watching this and you're blessing them right now. Mm -hmm. You, 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 you are, you are inspiring them to consider tech. Some of y'all watching right now, hate your job. Some of y'all right now hate, and I say hate is a bad word, we're all Christians. You just you just really don't care for your boss, <laughs> you know. And you're saying you want to change. You you want something different. You want God in it. You 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 just want to be just refreshed. And and I believe that's tech. If I wasn't where I was today, right? I'm looking into the tech field. All of my young people who I'm mentoring right now, I'm telling them tech. When you graduate high school, if you don't want to go to a four year school and you 18, tech. What school should you look at? I got you. Just when you when you're ready, holler at me. Because you could be 18 with Jordan Spirit by 20, you making a quarter million dollars a year. What? Okay, okay. Let me go back to this question. <sighs> AnthonyO'Neill.com slash Bethel. Y'all, AnthonyO'Neill.com forward slash Bethel. You, you gotta go check it out. Jordan, what are some what are some example things you could do on the side? Like, let's say if I called you, mm -hmm. I got my own business. I got my own website, stuff like that. What could you do for me on the side? Well, it's funny because I actually, for the first nine months after I graduated from Bethel Tech, I actually supported myself doing freelance with another Bethel Tech alumni, which is really cool. So we um, would actually work with a lot of businesses to build brand kits for them, to do a lot of design work, to also um, a lot of WordPress websites as well. So even though I didn't learn WordPress in Bethel Tech, like being able, like it kind of whets your appetite for a, a vast majority of different tech um, avenues, I guess is the, the best word to say. Um, so we were actually um, keeping up with a lot of WordPress websites, making sure that their websites were running well and smoothly. We did like a lot of system analyzing to make sure if anything broke, we'd fix it. So it was actually pretty good money um, for those nine months, but I definitely wanted something more full time that I could step into. You're looking for some more work, Jordan? Um, not the moment. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I may need to hire you inside, throw you a little bit of money, throw you a little bit of money. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Anthony, I want to say something too. You know, to Jordan's point, I, I firmly believe she's gonna like she's on a rocket ship trajectory with her career. 
she's going to get promotion after promotion. You know, the thing is, we focus on high skill and high character. I think that's mm. the sauce to what Bethel Tech is. And Jordan's skill can get her in the door, but it's her character, it's her high character mm -hmm. that actually will lead to promotion. And yeah. so she has tons of favor because companies are falling over themselves, not just to get qualified talent on the hard skills, on the tech skills, but they want people who are high character, high integrity, mm -hmm. who know what healthy relationship and community look like, who know what accountability and integrity and trust look like, and brave communication. Yeah. And that's what we teach in addition to the hard skills. And Jordan embodies that so well. There's no doubt in my mind that she's going to go, she's going to just keep like from glory to glory. God loves her, takes good care of her. This is obviously a divine setup as it is for so many people out there that go through our program. And uh, the sky's the limit for her because she she is, she's high character, man. And she's high skill. So that's a powerful combo right there. Yeah. And I think I love how you said that, man. Her character is keeping her in there, um, and her character got my, got got her on my show, um, and her character will always get a. She can always come back to my show. I mean, this is just this is just absolutely amazing. How does it feel, um, uh, Jordan, being twenty eight, um, great income, loving your career field? as a single mother, like, do you feel like, do you feel good knowing that your financial life is secure? Your daughter's future is, is properly set up. You know, when you look at your daughter today, I'm curious, what are some of your goals for her down the road? Like, what are some decisions that you're making today that will impact her? Mm -hmm. Well, one of my dreams was that she would go to a private Christian school here in the area that I could have never afforded before doing tech. So I think just the opportunities that are available for her. She's also in gymnastics full time. She does um, music, you know, like she's learning piano. So I just think all these little things that are so contributing into her life that I don't think would have been possible and maybe possible before tech, but just a lot harder. So I think it's so great that I'm not distracted by my need, but now I can focus actually on what the Lord has moving forward, actually building other people, sewing into, you know, the next generation, like my daughter, instead of being distracted by my bills or what I can't do because of my financial status. So I think I'm just hopeful and excited to see if the Lord can do this in the past three, you know, the last three years, what can he do moving forward? <sighs> you know, I was doing some research and I was reviewing what are the, who are the rising millionaires when it comes to people who are working nine to five jobs. And when I say millionaires, not people who make an income of a million, but people who have a net worth of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. tech, and inside tech, software developers. And, I, and I'm looking at a future net worth millionaire mm -hmm. right now. And I just want to encourage you to uh, keep God first, you know, um, I, I, there is definitely something different about you and I'm excited. And, um, Ryan, he's never heard this from me, but I'm gonna say it on, because it's my show. Yo, don't let no man just come into your life right now. He need to be a God feared man. He need to be a solid man with a solid plan, with a solid vision, because if he don't, you, you, my little sister now, I'm gonna come to him and I'm gonna let him know. You know, this is a good woman making good money, got a beautiful daughter, got a good life, and she loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord? <laughs> She's going to be a millionaire. Are you even a half a year? <laughs> That's not even a word. Like, are you are you a half a millionaire? Like, are, what what where where is your mind? Because I, mean, I just see it all over you, and um, oh, you. you know, because the average uh, my friends over at Ramsey Solutions did a study, mm -hmm. right, and they studied over ten thousand millionaires, people who have a net worth of a million dollars or more. And the average income, yearly income was in between like 70 to like $90,000. You're mm -hmm. 28, about to hit that. You're already there at the 70 mark, but you're mm -hmm. about to be surpassed that uh, by the end of this year. And so this means it, which I know you are, because we've talked about it. Like if you're investing properly, living below your means, um, and, and here's the here's thing I love about you. I'm all over the place right now because I just love teaching. I'm, I'm a pastor at heart. Ryan knows this. <laughs> One of my friends, uh, Justin, he said, man, people, um, yeah, you're living below, uh, you, you're living, 
you're living above your means, but you're living uh, below your potential. And it's like for you, what I'm seeing is you're living below your means, but you're living at your God given potential. And because mm -hmm. you're living at your God given potential, God is providing everything that you want, need, desire for you, for your daughter's life. And I'm just excited. Like I, I want to do another show with you like this time next year. I want to bring mm -hmm. you back home. Like, yo, did you hit your goal? And I want you to come on. This is this. I hit the goal and this is how I hit the goal uh, because you you are just inspiring me, man. And I can't wait to see where you are at 38 because uh, you, you're going to tell me, yeah, I got a million dollars in my investment portfolio. I was like, for real? Yeah, God God elevated me. Now I make about a quarter million dollars a year. And my daughter is great. And she's about to graduate high school. And she's going to college debt free. And yeah, it's cool, yeah. you know. And so I just, I just want to say thank you. Thank wow. you for coming on to this show and to en encouraging us um, on why to take tech seriously. Um, especially as a um, single, a single mother, um, and um, praying for your daughter, and uh, praying for you, because I do know being a single mother could be stressful at times, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. at least you don't have to worry about money and career. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. This has been an honor talking to you and yeah. talking to your community. So. Hope this blesses someone out there. <laughs> it definitely will. It definitely will. Hey, you guys, real quick, the top five jobs in technology, right? The five best jobs. I'm going to put it like that when it comes to tech. And this study uh, just came out. Actually, the U.S. News and Report uh, just came out with this study. Information security analyst, software development, uh, data scientist, IT manager, computer system analyst. The only one I am like, uh, Ryan, I'm like, what's data scientist? Da what is that? Like data, you, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they just look at a lot of data and just, just report the data of everything they researched. Yeah, absolutely. You got all this data that's coming in from these different channels at companies. It's like gold. Actually, data is considered more valuable than, from, uh, than oil and it's, it's unlimited. So companies are making inferences, they're analyzing data, they're taking, they're scrubbing the data. Um, you know, pulling the, the bad data from the, uh, the good data from the bad data, and then they're making business insights on how the future of their organization is going to look. So data, data science is a massive industry, pays incredibly well. Actually, the starting pay for a data analyst or a data scientist is around eighty to $90,000. And everything we hear in the news about artificial intelligence and machine learning, data science is the foundation for all of that. It's how do you take the data to make inferences and you know, um, and, and and be able to simulate things based on all the repetition of the information that they get. So that is a massive, massive, massive growing uh, um, field as well. What about the information security analysts? Because that's like um, ID theft. Am I right? Like they yeah. help people protect yeah. their identity. Um, yeah. What are they starting off at? Like ballpark. Yeah, around 70, uh, 70 to $80,000. But again, sky's the limit. It's not uncommon. Get in the door. Honestly, as much as you're going to learn at Bethel Tech in nine months, like the best type of training you can possibly get after that is on-the-job training. You'll be drinking from a fire hose that first year. But if you can get through it, like you've got a great team to support you, like you're, you're going to set yourself up to be making, like you were talking about, I mean, uh, 150, 200,000. I mean, it is not uncommon to be doing that very, very quickly. They just need people in this space. And also, they're going to need people, you know, like that aren't going to get themselves on the front page of the New York Times for things that are bad. Like, they want high character people. So that's why, you know, Jordan represents, she is the essence of who Bethel Tech is and why we exist. It's not just her skill, which is through the roof. It's her character. And I'm just so honored that she listened to the Lord and said yes to Bethel Tech mm -hmm. and that she gets to carry that into the marketplace because that it is why we exist. She is why we exist. Man, I love it. I love it. I, I, I really do love it. Um, and so, Ryan, uh, this program is open to anyone. If, it, if a high schooler says, no, I really want to get into the tech field, uh, they can come into Bethel Tech. And then yes. if there's a 65 year old who's saying, I want to change this field, they can get into Bethel Tech. Uh, you all do not have a specific age. 
um, education requirement. They do. They have to finish high school, right? Do you accept people with GEDs, for an example? Yeah, yeah, high school uh, d- uh, diploma or an equivalent, but okay. we have just opened it up to juniors and seniors in high school as well, uh, because this is so intuitive what, to them, even if they don't realize it, like they've grown up in the digital age. So we have, you know, 18, 19 year olds who are just like flying through it. They're like, man, this is like second nature to me. So we are starting to open it up on special cases where a junior or senior, if they have the time, um, it, that, you know, like homeschool, you know, would be a good example of that, uh, that they could go through the program as well. Wait a minute. You, you, you didn't call him. You didn't call me and tell me this, Ryan. Well, it's brand new. It's brand new. <laughs> so, so yeah. break that down a little bit. Cause I have a lot of parents right now, a yeah. lot of grandparents watching this right now of juniors and seniors. So one, they got to have, of course they got to take like some tests to even see, right. If yeah. they can hang with the program. Yeah, we have an assessment test, but also, you, so preliminary on that would be uh, um, to ha- have uh, Algebra 1 and 2, okay. and then you can go through the program. So up to this point, it has been a high school diploma or um, an equivalent, uh, but we are kind of expanding it out just because there's so many, you know, what one thing the last couple of years has taught us more than anything as traditional inst- universities shut down um, is that you actually don't always need a four year degree. No. I mean, four year degrees are great, but you know, even like being forced to do a gap year, some of our students who had just graduated high school who thought they were going into college, but they couldn't get in because the, the college shut down. Um, they went through our program and you know, they went through our program in nine months, three months later, got a $65,000 job as a 19 year old. Like I'm like, dude, I was, I was selling sporting goods for five thirteen an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Not know what I was gonna do, and they're like now doing this. So like, there's a there's a real shift in higher ed um, to these types of accelerated learning programs uh, that you can make as much money than you would going through a four year spending you know 180 grand on a four year degree. Bethel Tech just changed the whole game. <laughs> Y'all just changed the whole game. Because now, because you're right, these 18 and 19 year olds are smarter than than us in our 30s and 40s when it comes to this tech stuff. And I believe that they are the future when it comes to the tech, you know, and uh, wow. So parents, if you're watching this or or if you're watching this and you know someone who has a, a smart 18, 19 year old, junior or senior in, in high school, um, and they're serious about education. They're serious about getting ahead of the game. These are not the ones who just want to do stuff because it's popular. I want to say this up front. Um, I, I, if you know someone who has a smart, bright, passionate young person who loves technology um, and they're doing good in school already, you need to get them connected with Bethel. Because can you think about this? You graduate high school. You you already have the education to go get a job making sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year. Can you imagine where this kid could be when he's 19 and 20 before he is legal to uh, to, to even get a drink? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Before he is legal to get a drink, he can actually be making six figures? What? This, man, listen. Ryan, you just made me want to go ahead and get married and rush to, to get my kid to be 18 because... <laughs> Like this, I mean, because how many parents right now are sitting at home watching this saying, you know, what is my son and daughter doing? Like, they're wondering, like, well, what are you going to do with your life? And young people love technology. They they love it. <laughs> Bethel Tech, Ryan, y'all on point. Jordan, you keep winning. You, you keep winning, my friend. Um, uh, if you're watching this, I, I want to encourage you, take some time. Pray. Pray about it. Ask God, what is this for me? Let's say you have more questions. That's great. Go to the website, anthonyoneal.com slash Bethel and talk to one of their their counselors. Talk to one of their um, enrollment specialists and they'll answer all of your questions for you. And by the time you get off that phone call, um, I believe that the majority of you will feel this is a great fit. And some of y'all may leave and say this is not a great fit. And that's okay. That, that's okay. Um, but I, I do believe if you're still watching us right now, you're, you're hungry and, um, and you're ready for a shift. You're, you're ready for something new. 
single mothers, I pray. I mean, if you weren't inspired by uh, Jordan today, I don't know what else can inspire you. Uh, because this young queen is is winning, and I'm super excited to see where she is. I'm, she is 10 years younger than me. Actually, 11. 11 years younger than me. And she is making good... I, I, Jesus. So, um, mm -hmm. brothers, don't go looking for her on, on IG. You know what I'm saying? Because she's taken by the Lord. I don't know her dating life or her situation right now with another man. Uh, but I do know this much. God is with her. And so, um, you know, don't be, don't be, don't be seeing all this, you know, good potential. I'm like, oh, I need to go. No, no, no. Get into Bethel Tech and let, let them help you <laughs> attract her that way. Get, get to know the Lord and get your bag up and then try to. <laughs> Yo, man, before we leave, Ryan, as a partner, man, is there anything you want to leave um, our people with? Oh, man, I just want to say thank you um, for being uh uh, just a voice for Bethel Tech yeah. and you know your uh, tribe is thriving yeah. you know this first six months they're absolutely thriving and it's not just the hard skills man it's not just the tech skills it's the community that they have it's the character building piece of it which they already had embedded inside their heart we just like highlighting that and man I'm so excited to see where these people are going to be in you know a year from now these, these graduates a year from now two years from now um, you know, we're going to have a lot of Jordans come out of this. And, uh, you know, but the other part of it is that this is a unique, in, like God cares about the individual. Yeah. So you might, you know, we have a lot of trends within Bethel Tech and our graduates, but it's about you individually and what the Lord is saying to you and how he's going to, he's just going to bring the best out of you through this program. And that's our commitment to you. Like our number one thing is we care about people and we help people we honor god we love god we love his, all his children and we take care of them so like this is this is something that's going to be life-changing for you for your children and your children's children we can help you build legacy um if you just say yes if you say yes to the lord number one and then we're here to help you um take you from here to here in as little as nine months that's how we're going to end the show ladies and gentlemen Say yes to the Lord and we'll help you get the bag. <laughs> Yo, we love you all. Thank you so much for rocking with us. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to check out uh, the show notes from today's show to um, get more information about Bethel and what they're offering. Like I said, uh, if you're a part of my tribe, if you click on my link and you tell them AO sent you, uh, they will give you a scholarship of about $1,500. And, you know, um, you know, they haven't guaranteed me nothing else, but they're a generous place. And if you go in there and you share their story and if it's a God thing, I mean, there's some more help they'll pray about it and see what else they can do um and, and i love it you know and so check bethel tech out and i'll see you on the next show peace out you guys